famous chapter known for love. It's read at probably every single way. Beautiful. You can't touch it. You can't beat it. You could use Shakespeare, but it's not going to be as good as 1 Corinthians 13. Beautiful, beautiful pastime. Love. Love, not really romanticized, but real. You know, it says it clearly. If I have not love, but sing praises and speak in tongues of men, but have not love, I'm just a noise. If I do all this good work for charity, but have not love, I am gain nothing. And then it says what love really is. So sometimes the word love is very overused. So overused, you don't even know what it means anymore. It doesn't even have any value anymore. But he, he breaks it down. He says, this is what love is. It's patient. So patience is love. It's kind. So being kind is love. It does not envy. So being able to appreciate somebody's success is love. It does not boast, so, you know, not giving an exaggerated opinion of yourself, is love. It is not proud. Not saying you don't need people that you really need, is love. It is not rude, that should be clear enough. It is not self-seeking. Self-seeking meaning you just look after you and that's it. Everyone else doesn't matter. Mm. It is not easily angered. I mean, sometimes we get angry when we love. And lots of times when you love, you're going to get angry. It's all not to get angry when you love and don't see things turning out right. But easily angered. That's a, that's a key. It keeps no record of wrongs. Not holding on and being better. That may not sound like love. But that's love. Love does not delight in evil. And the evil may be another word that is just too fancy. Love does not delight in people taking advantage of people. Love does not delight in evil or people hurting people. Love does not delight in people deceiving people for their own destruction. doesn't delight in that. There's a phrase in Germany. It's a word called Schadenfreude. It's one of the most beautiful words ever created by us human beings. Schadenfreude. What it means is shameful joy. So when you look and you see somebody you don't like hurting, and you are happy about it. <laughs> That's delighting me. Delighting is all. They, they got happy. He breaks it down. You may say, I don't know what love is. You cannot say that no longer. 
It is clear right here. It's patient, kind, does not envy, does not boast, it's not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, meaning love just keeps on going. Love loves loving love. This is a phrase I read somewhere in the book that drove me nuts, but it's true. It just keeps going. Love never fails. And he says it with our prophecies, they cease. With their tongues, they'll be quiet. With there's knowledge, people forget. We know in part prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, completion comes, the imperfect disappears, and then he hits it. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child when I became a man. I put childless ways behind. In other words, love is growing up. And when you mature in Christ, what that looks like is love. And if you wonder how do I mature in Christ, what that looks like is learning how to love. This passage is not about romance. This is not Paul writing to a beautiful woman he met in Corinth. <laughs> so sometimes you write, a, you know, you're, you're, so, so Bill Clinton in one speech, right? In the DNC, he gave a little, almost flirtatious compliment to Michelle Obama, right? So it was very nice, but it was, Bill Clinton's like, hi, he gives compliments to people, right? This wasn't that. This wasn't a section where he's giving a compliment to somebody less. This is actually following a section where he says, you are one body. You're a church. You're one body filled with many parts. And if the eye says to the feet, I am better than you, that's not good. And if the foot says to the body, I don't want to be a part of you since I'm not an eye, Paul says that's not good. What Paul is talking about before this love chapter is, look, you're a church, y'all. You're a good church, a wonderful church. But, and you have gifts. You have people who can heal people because they are filled in nursing degrees and knowledge. You have people who are good at administration. You have people who know how to set up a room so that everyone can fit comfortably. You have people who can prophesy and tell me who is going to win the football game and who is going to lose the football game. And if I were a gambling man, I would listen to some of y'all because y'all are smart. You have people who can preach. Three announcements to the retreat. Those are some of the best sermons you're going to hear in two minutes. You have people who can teach. Someone upstairs, I believe, there is someone who is very gifted at teaching, teaching young ones. You have all you need. You got the music right here. You got, you got many gifts, many, many, many wonderful gifts. And sometimes you envy each other. He's saying because one gift is a little more public than another gift. You know, some, something about singing really well looks a little more spiritual than doing the numbers right. But let, let it be said that Paul says that doing the numbers right is just as spiritual a gift as me singing my beautiful little heart out. He says, you got it all. Yeah, you're a little divided. You got it all. You're a little sick. A sick body is where the parts fight each other. You're a little divided. You got it all, he's saying. Let me show you the most excellent way to be. You desire gifts, you desire a special good. Great. Let me show you the best gift, the greatest gift. And now we turn to love. Church is not a social club. It's more than that. Church is where we put aside the childishness of adulthood to mature into being a child of God. Amen. Church is where we put aside the childlessness of adulthood and mature in love to become a child of God. You don't go to church. You become church through love. This building is beautiful. I love it. But it's not church. It's a building. It's not church. You are church. We are only come through love. I was um, thinking about putting aside childishness, and I think about a movie. You all know the movie Pinocchio? Yes. Does everybody in here know the movie Pinocchio? Yeah. Y'all might not. You do? We do. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Pinocchio is most famous for, you know, when he lies, he goes, Whoop! right? <laughs> Everyone knows Pinocchio, when he lies, his nose goes, oh. all right, so the story of Pinocchio goes something like this. It is a very Christian tale, the Disney version. 
Not the original book. If you read the original book, it has more violence than rap music. But Disney's version is a, Disney's version is a very Christian tale. All right, follow me. Don't, don't, don't get up there. Just stay with me. Walk with me, right? You have a creator, Geppetto. Right? He makes all this stuff. He makes all these clocks. He makes time. Then finally, he makes a doll, a doll with strings that he has to control. The creator then finally wishes that this doll is a, quote, real boy. 